people can't be defeated because you know that we can succeed it because you know policy's not what's needed why does u.s government by the democratic or republican see me i'm not supportive of it back in the day welcome to chicago independent television a show independent of corporate and commercial interests we show locally produced grassroots media and provide an open space for local media. I'm Mitchell Strapinchik, and I'm standing in front of the Calder in Federal Plaza in downtown Chicago, the location of protest rallies against the 2003 war in Iraq and the protest action that took over Lakeshore Drive on March 20th, 2003. On today's show, we'll see two segments devoted to the one-year anniversary of that protest takeover. We'll also visit the University of Chicago for some theatrical protest, and we'll visit with Chicago anti-war activist Kathy Kelly. Stay with us. But I used to be in high school in New York City public schools, and I know that every year, um, we had to fight for our budget. Like every year they'd start threatening to cut it and that we'd have to fire like five or ten teachers, which is huge and like, and it was a small, it was a small school. And so every year you have to go down to the city council and be like, please don't cut the budget. And I, I organized several um, rallies against the budget cuts in high schools and also in the um, city colleges there. And it was, it was ridiculous that like we had no money for this and yet we're spending five billion dollars a month in Iraq and Afghanistan. It just seems kind of wrong. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. March 20th, 2004 marked the one year anniversary of the war on Iraq and the Chicago anti-war march that took over Lakeshore Drive. On March 20th, 2004, protesters met again to protest against the occupations in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Palestine, as we'll see in this next segment. We started off at Water Tower Place, um, where thousands of people gathered uh, in a huge display, and then marched down Chicago Avenue through piles and piles of horse shit that the police kindly provided for our path. Um, then we continued on to the Federal Plaza, and now we are completely occupying the space, all of the surrounding streets, and, and a little ways down the block. Uh, we decided that it's more important to march in solidarity with the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people um, around the world who are marching today against the war, and we um, we did just that, and it was um, a powerful event. It was a, an energetic. Uh, a very um, positive event. There's a definite feeling of, of expectation, of optimism in this crowd, and it's very refreshing to see. I feel like we're at a real um, turning point in the movement. People are starting to believe that change is possible. It's important for us to get out and protest the war because it continues. The deaths of Iraqis by the thousands continue. The deaths of American GIs continue. The wholesale destruction of Iraqi sovereignty continues. Make no mistake, as much as this silly president talks about bringing democracy to Iraq, it's quite clear that the only kind of democracy that he will permit will be the democracy of a puppet regime which does the United States bidding. stopped in front of Daly's office to tell him how absurd we think it is and um, how disappointed we are in him uh, as the mayor of an anti-war city with a city council that passed an anti-war resolution for not allowing us to be granted our permit to march today as is our democratic right and our responsibility in times like this. Mayor Daly, you and your democratic party machine, we hold you directly responsible for the
exaggerated police presence here at our march today. Um, and, you know, all of the body armor, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle costumes that they have on definitely kind of chills the set and, and makes a situation where people think, feel like, you know, they're doing something illegal to come out and join us in our protest. And it really, um, I think, deters dissent and hinders the democratic process. You know, I think it's very hypocritical that we claim to be venturing off into foreign countries to help promote democracy when we're going to such great lengths to try to deter it here at home. Well, as we've had over the past few weeks, we've had a running battle with the city administration about the mere right to assemble. We didn't know when we got to Water Tower Park if they were going to allow us to set up sound. We didn't know if they were going to allow us to stay there and have a rally. And as it turns out, we did have uh, a running verbal argument with Sherry Mecklenburg, the person who threatened to arrest me earlier this week, um, about whether or not we have the right to express our First Amendment rights at Chicago and Michigan. Let them go down the side. Let With us no there. front at all? We don't need them in the front of us. Yeah, you know what? This is the way that they do it, and this is the we way it's been peaceful. We do not need them in front of us. Let them. never been a complaint before, but, but you always, asked for space, and we gave you space. So no, we'll continue no, to no, give no, you space. No, let them march sideways. We do not need them leading us. They're not our leaders. This is a violation, a real violation. We're not acting like your leaders. We're trying to give you space. Let's move it along, because there's people in the back who are having problems. We need them to march laterally. Reverend, we're having people. Problems in the back. Let's march. Let's we're, having, march. we're having problems in the front we're because the police have been blocked. I want you to stop playing games. Let them stop. Let them stop. We stop because they stop. Movement begins at the front. Movement begins at the front. Let them stop. 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 And I'm so proud that so many thousands came out here today to say that we're not only going to oppose this undemocratic regime on the national level, but also the undemocratic regime right here in the city of Chicago. So for those who say that this is just a problem of the Republican Party, look at our mayor. Look at who is directly responsible for the attempted suppression of civil liberties here today. This was not Ashcroft's Justice Department at work. It was Mayor Daley's cops, Mayor Daley's Sherry Mecklenburg, and the rest of them who are attempting to intimidate protesters from exercising their First Amendment rights. You're watching Chicago Independent Television. So what's really exciting to me is that the Books Not Bombs Day of Action, along with the Healthcare Day of Action, really are about demanding a new set of priorities. And it's really a way to, to bring in lots of different groups and to bring in lots of different causes. Um, and really, I think, drawing really clear connections between money being spent in Iraq, money being spent in Afghanistan, and the loss of services in the U.S. 4.4 um, million people in the U.S. without health care. Students' education is in a crisis right now. Healthcare is in a crisis right now, and these are really important issues that affect people in the U.S. that aren't, aren't being addressed at all because of the war. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. Student activists called for new budget priorities on March 4, 2004, in a series of protest actions called Education Not Empire. At the University of Chicago, student protesters donned UN weapons inspector uniforms and scoured the campus for weapons of mass destruction. Let's join the Weapons of Mass Destruction scavenger hunt at U of C.
We're looking for weapons of mass destruction. If you could help us out, we'd appreciate it. Are they under the table? I heard there was 20 billion tons under Tom Hall. Excuse me, are there any weapons of mass destruction in the room? It's imperative that we find these weapons of mass destruction. Colin Powell told me that they exist. I know they must. Please contact me there if you find any. Thank you. Have you seen any weapons of mass destruction? Oh, you must have. It looks like you work here, and we heard there's 20 billion tons underneath Cobb Hall. It's hit somewhere in Washington, I'm sure. Duck and cover. That's the first thing to do. Duck and cover. First, you duck. And then, you cover. You duck and cover. Fight. Duck. That's what you're saying does. He feeds his people in rich uranium. Yes. And then he mines it from their bodies. That's why they're such crazy fanatics. 8,229 That must be a lot. 11,000 US, US soldiers have been medically evacuated. Do not Would you help us with our search? Well, I don't know where to look. If you see them. I'll notify you immediately. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey. It's a motherfucker. Don't you know? They push that button. Yeah, it's not going. It's a motherfucker. Don't you know? They push that button. Yeah, it's not going. Excuse me. Have you any weapons of mass destruction? I haven't seen any it. evidence in there? Can, do you mind if I take a look? No. no. I'm gonna write it for they, mu they must. Oh. Thank you. I've heard. They must exist. I know they exist. We have an embedded journalist here reporting everything. He's going to tell the American. Thomas Yard, embedded journalist. <laughs> this means something. Where are the weapons of mass destruction? Oh, I think there was uranium here it's once. It's anthrax? Oh, it's yes, anthrax? yes. It's been made into cleverly disguised as a white paste. No. It's simply vanilla frosting. Oh. Damn it! Boy, again! I'm saying we know they're here! Are there any weapons of mass destruction in there? Can you please tell me if there's any weapons of mass destruction? Thank you. That's funny. Oh, a very important sign. Halliburton making more illegal profits. And have you seen the weapons of mass destruction? Because we heard he cleverly disguised them underneath all the food. Well, where are they then? We couldn't find them in Cobb. We couldn't find them in Harper. We couldn't find them in Kent. So we surely thought they would be here. No, I don't I think, think they exist. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, they Sorry, you're not going to find them. I'm exhausted, but our Contact us there if you find them. If you Shrill find any WMDs, contact us there. What Thank do they you. look like? <laughs> oh, you'll know when you see them. <laughs> I was told they're in the White House, though. That's what someone told me. It's Thomas Yun, embedded journalist with the Anarchist Broadcasting Corporation, here with the UN weapons inspectors searching for weapons of mass destruction at the University of Chicago. When will we find them? The American people need to know. Sorry, have you found any weapons of mass destruction? Um, I heard they sold them to this dog who's operating as of Kazakhstan, who has ties to my brother, who has ties on the internet to Al-Qaeda. Let us know. Let us know when you track him down. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching Chicago Independent Television.